that day, five cities in the land of Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear by the Lord of hosts. One will be called the City of Destruction. In that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. And it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they will cry to the Lord because of the oppressors, and he will send them a savior and a mighty one, and he will deliver them. Then the Lord will be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day, and will make sacrifice and offering. Yes, they will make a vow to the Lord and perform it. And the Lord will strike Egypt. He will strike and heal it. They will return to the Lord, and he will be entreated by them and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian will come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians will serve with the Assyrians. In that day, Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt, my people and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel my inheritance. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, it's a sheer shalom, shalom to you, other brethren. You follow, you also, you followers of the truth, and shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go in this video here that I ran across dealing with the Isaiah 19 Egypt prophecy. Now, before I get started, the one thing I noticed that was um, kind of disturbing, right? Which is not disturbing, but it's disturbing to the world when we cheer on. Or we speak of being laying hold to the covenant, and Heavenly Father's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shah dealing dealing with the um, blacks, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and some of you others that may look like other nations, but it's still Israelites. But everybody has a problem when we stand up and we cheer, right? <laughs> when we throw up uh, blessings you know, to the covenant. But somehow these false Egyptians, because they're not the true Egyptians anyway, it's it's amazing how somebody can take land and call it after themselves, as I believe Psalms, the book of Psalms say, they name the lands after themselves, which the Egypt was basically named after Mizraim, right? That's all it means. That's the name of it. But it's really bondage. You know, it's another place of bondage. But they're cheering. They're happy. Right? And they're saying, they're just trying to jump in there and say, hey, we're fulfilling the prophecies. <laughs> well, Egypt is done away with. That Egypt. There's, there's Just because it says Egypt, we'll get that. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships because you don't need ships now to go to Egypt. This is clearly the transatlantic slave trade. You had the sub-Saharan slave trade and you had the transatlantic slave trade, right? Which were mostly Israelites, right? But you also had our people more likely amongst some of the sub-Saharan slave trade. But this slave trade was with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So it'd be kind of crazy to be sold and then say, hey, no man is going to buy you when you was already sold, right? But nobody, nobody's going to redeem you. That's pretty much what it's saying. Now, let's go to Exodus 20 and 2. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which power? 
which had brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So America is another word, another name for Egypt. Because after all, when this was written, clearly it wasn't say America, right? And if it did, the discoverers would have saw that and said, wait a minute, we can't say that's America. It would be discovered. That's why it's, it's, it's a mystery, right? It's a mystery to some Jake. So clearly this is, when you go back to Isaiah 19, it's not talking about actual Egypt. But let's say it was, but we know it wasn't. We're going to go into the translations and show you that this is not talking about Egyptians as a people, right? This is talking about Egypt as the land, right? But it's talking about Israelites that are actually in Egypt. And it's crazy how they, you know, when you take a translation and then you make another translation and you make another translation, by the time it gets to the translation that everybody sees, you got one thing that'll throw it off. It may be a, a word left out, a word not put in, and that's all it takes to screw up a sentence, man. But we're going to go to the Septuagint and we're going to go to, you know, a few other translations and show you what it actually say. Uh, we're going to go to the Bible of 1535, which predates the King James and the Geneva, right? Which, um, well, you had the King James 1611, right? But then after that, they took the Apocrypha. This also had the Apocrypha. So you go to the Coverdale. It's called the Coverdale Bible of 1535. It says, and the Lord of hosts shall bless them, saying, we can also see this in uh, Genesis 12 and 3. Bless them that bless thee. Right? It's all about the Israelites. And the Lord of hosts shall bless them, saying, Blessed is my people of, of the Egyptians. Right? Blessed is my people of the Egyptians. And that's all it took. Asher, it says Asher, it's supposed to be Assyrian, is the work of my holds, but Israel is my inheritance. So let's go on down here to the Bishop Bible of 1568. It says, Which land of the Lord of hosts has blessed, saying, Blessed is my people of Egypt. You see? Here's one that says, Bless my people of the Egyptians and my people of Egypt. So where did bless my people Egypt come from? What happened to of Egypt? Well, let's go on. Um... This is another one. Um, and the Lord of hosts blessed them, saying, Blessed is my people of the Egyptians. Let's go to the Aramaic Bible in plain English, right? These are the translations, the Aramaic Bible. Him who the Lord Jehovah, which is Yahweh of hosts, blesses and says, Blessed are my people in Egypt and the work of my hands. So when we see the the, the definition, the original, it says, bless my people, Egypt. Why didn't they put in Egypt or of Egypt? You know, kind of left that part out, right? But this is actually talking about the Israelites in Egypt, right? And the works of the hands of are the Assyrians, which we can go, uh, and, and my inheritance, Israel, which we can go to, what is it, Isaiah we can go to Isaiah 14 and kind of bring that together. Let's go to Isaiah 14. I think it's Isaiah 14. And we could kind of bring uh, bring that together as well because you got to go to the precepts. Uh, this is Isaiah, Isaiah 14 and 1. It says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel right where out of Egypt and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them right who is the strangers and they shall cleave into the house of Jacob so we can go back here and see basically who are the strangers and the work of my hands who are in the Assyria who in Assyria 
and my people Israel. We can also see this in Hosea the first, what is the uh, first chapter. Then the children of Israel, the children of Judah, the children of Israel shall be bound together and pointed themselves one head, right? So we go down here to the Britain Septuagint, Brenton Septuagint translations. It's saying, saying, blessed be my people that is in Egypt, that is among the Assyrians and the Israel of my inheritance. It's crazy how these nations all of a sudden, because they see Egypt and Assyria, they all of a sudden, because they see a verse like this, they all of a sudden want to lay hold to the covenant that was not for them. Did, didn't you know that the, the Most High used you non-Israelites, let me say that, to oppress and enslave the Israelites? You mean to tell me you ain't going to pay for that? Let's go to Isaiah 11, 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush, right? And from Elam and from Shinar and from Hemoth and all the islands of the sea. So you're going to have Israelites scattered amongst these nations. So in all actual reality, when you look at the, the, the way these people think why would the Lord recover his people from Assyria or from Egypt if they was his people and from Pathros and Cush if they was his people and from Elam and Shinar Hamath and the islands if they was his people why would he have to recover them from there they would already be good right guess what our people over in that unholy land too so that's what it's representing I just wanted to give a new, a little more clarity on that doctrine of Isaiah 19 and 26, where it says, blessed are my, be my people that is in Egypt, not blessed, my, that, not blessed my people, Egypt, which we can still bring that together and say Egypt is when it talks about that as our people because our people follows the ways of Egypt right but when you really look at it it's blessed that are my people that is in Egypt that is in America that is in this place right and starting with the elect right don't we call ourselves Americans or whatever else we call ourselves or, or um, we call ourselves whatever other nations right we call ourselves Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. We call ourselves all kinds of names, right? But you got to be able to go into the text. You got to be able to go into the spirituality of it. But this is why these texts was written, but we had to go in and decipher it. Because you can't have it where the, the Lord said, all Israel shall be saved. It's all about the Israelites. All Israel shall be saved. But the Egyptians, my people. Right, but then what happened to everybody else that is his people? You see where it goes. What about the the Hamites? Okay, what about the Edomites? So why do you say bless Egypt and the Edomites and all the other nations? This is the the Christians who pick and choose and try to make it their own. But the disturbing part is the Christian says all people can lay hold to the covenant and the the salvation. But these guys in this video. As you see, all of them who claim to be Egyptians, which they're not, and some of them may be to a small degree, they're only subscribing to themselves being chosen. We're the only ones not allowed to be. And that's crazy. That's the curse of the, curse of the Lord, man. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.